Well, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is November 30th, the last day of November. We're going to have a bunch of stuff uh, on No Shave ending, and we're going to be catching up with the guys. So this morning, joining me is Tiffany. Yay! It's nice to be here with nice you in the studio, you. especially today, because it is rainy and not such a pretty morning. I know. So we'll keep your hair protected. Yes. <laughs> and also keeping her hair protected, Mia Montgomery, thank you for joining us. I morning. am also so happy to be here with y'all this morning inside, staying dry, because yes, it has been a damp start to this last day of the month. The roads are wet, so definitely plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time to get to where you need to be safely if you are fixing to step out. Let's take a look at the radar and you'll notice that we're not seeing a ton actually on the radar. A few hits closer to New Braunfels and Seguin working farther north. A lot of times, especially in this particular setup, the water particles may be too small or they may be sitting just below the radar beam, so it's hard for the radar to actually pick that up. So what we look at is visibility to see where exactly we still have some of that drizzle, some of that mist, and even some patchy fog out there early this Thursday morning. Visibility down to just a mile over at the airport, closer to two miles as you get towards Port SA, but still it is very damp out there. So again, just be very careful this morning. We will eventually see all of this work eastward as we head into the afternoon, so we will dry things out. I do anticipate a few peaks of sunshine later this afternoon as well. High temperatures topping off near 70 degrees. So that'll be the theme today. Tomorrow, maybe some patchy morning fog. Then we see a boundary work through brings in some drier air. Temperatures warmer in the mid 70s this weekend looking fantastic. Chilly mornings near 50s highs in the 70s with that low humidity. So we'll talk all about it. Get you the latest details in just a few. But first, let's send things over to Stephen. Been a little busy out there with all this drizzle. Yeah, we've been tracking the issues all morning long. This is our latest one right here at 37 at Southeast Military. Let's get a wider look at Transguide. You can see plenty of first responders out there. This is a pretty serious crash, folks, heading northbound along I-37 as you approach Southeast Military Drive. Uh, it's a little bit of a muggy shot, so you can't really see the exact uh, scene there, but we do see a little few first responders out there. Not sure how many vehicles may be involved, but I can tell you this. Slowdowns are expected as you head northbound along 37. Three lanes blocked at this hour, and we aren't seeing any improvements out there, so just watch out. Pack some patience and let's just hope everyone's doing OK. Now it does appear that uh, we do have a few more slowdowns in the area, but this is actually a quieter shot than what we showed you earlier. We had few crashes reported starting around 2:30 this morning, so we've been tracking it all with the roads being a little bit wet or damp out there. It has likely caused some of those issues that we've continued to monitor. I want to bring it back to the shot here at 37 at Southeast Military. Again, it's a big problem spot right now, but one last look around town. You can see it there at 37 at Fair Avenue. It doesn't look too bad, but we do have a new issue that popped up right here along 1604 at Kyle Seal. I caught that at the corner of my eye. Our friends at Transguide are keeping a close eye on things, so big shout out to them, but we'll have another update and find out exactly what's going on here and what else you can expect coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Guys. A very busy morning. Thank you, Stephen, for keeping track of all of that. And let's look at today's 9 at 9. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger passed away at his home in Connecticut yesterday. He was 100 years old. Kissinger served as National Security Advisor and Secretary of State under Presidents Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. He received a Nobel Peace Prize for helping arrange the end of U.S. military involvement in the Vietnam War and was a pivotal figure in easing tensions with the Soviet Union. The temporary truce between Israel and Hamas has been extended once again. Officials from both sides issued statements saying the pause in military action will continue for a seventh day. Since the pause began, dozens of Israelis were freed by Hamas and over 200 Palestinians were released from Israeli jails. Some much needed aid has also been brought into the Gaza region. House Republicans are pushing to formalize an impeachment investigation into President Biden. Up until this point, they have not had the votes to legitimize their inquiry, but they now want to strengthen their subpoenas and compel testimony. Tomorrow, Republicans are holding a key conference meeting to try to convince holdouts in their party to get on board. The U.S. economy is growing faster than first thought. The Commerce Department now says gross domestic product jumped by 5.2% in the third quarter, up from previous estimates. 
Much of that growth comes from businesses investing in buildings, but experts say the momentum may be slowing, with consumer spending lagging the overall growth. Stellantis is recalling more than 32,000 hybrid Jeep Wrangler SUVs due to a potential fire risk. The recall involves certain model year 2021 to 2024 Jeep Wrangler 4XE SUVs. Now, customers can still drive their vehicles, but should refrain from charging them. Drivers are also encouraged to park them away from structures and other vehicles. Fresh off its contract fights with Detroit's big three automakers, the United Auto Workers Union is now targeting more car makers with organizing drives. It's now trying to unionize workers at companies like Tesla, Toyota, Honda, and Volkswagen. Two big health insurance companies may be on the way to a merger. Several reports now say Cigna and Humana are in talks to link up. A deal between the two would likely be worth more than $60 billion, but could also attract antitrust challenges. Pharmacy chain Rite Aid, which is already in the process of closing down more than 150 locations across the country, is now planning on shutting down dozens more in updated bankruptcy filings. The company has added 31 more locations to its closure list, spread across a dozen states. Tomorrow marks the 68th anniversary of the historic arrest of Rosa Parks on a bus in Alabama, and lawmakers are pushing for a bill honoring the civil rights activist. They want December 1st to be a federal holiday known as Rosa Parks Day. It would also be the first federal holiday honoring a woman. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In today's competitive professional world, dressing in formal wear can create a positive impression and project confidence. A project at St. Mary's University is giving students free clothing to help them in their career paths. I visited the university to see how they are helping students dress for success and ready to attend interviews and other events that can change their lives. Having the right clothes on changes my whole outlook and my whole attitude about how I present myself. When Lillian Hernandez Pereirino is going to attend a professional event, she sometimes comes here first to find the perfect outfit. If I know I'm wearing something that I look professional in and I feel comfortable in, I feel way more excited to be wherever I am and more intrigued to talk to uh, employers. Students at St. Mary's University have access to the Rattler wardrobe at the Grehe School of Business that opened in the beginning of the fall. Everything is free. Students can borrow or keep the donated clothes. He says, welcoming and just, she helps you out. If you need help styling yourself, she will help you out with that. The business school's work study supervisor, Lisa Ann Garcia, founded this project. And we have different options of clothes here, right? What can we find here? Yes, so I have, um, starting from cocktail attire, if they have an or, you know, a cocktail event or a formal event, um, business, casual, um, some of the coats that we have, um, blazers, uh, skirts, and pantsuit sets for the ladies and also for the gentlemen. Garcia says she saw firsthand the need for this project. A lot of the students didn't have professional wear to our events, so the, the event they would have to wear um, business attire and they didn't have that, so um, I would sometimes bring in clothes for them to wear. Alumni in different departments across the campus have donated clothes. After you finish choosing your outfit outside the Rattler wardrobe, there's more information about what you can wear to a professional event, and details matter. We do hold career fairs, we do hold this big event that we just wrapped up called the Business Week Experience, and we have all sorts of professionals come and talk, network with our students, uh, interview them, and so obviously looking sharp is really important for them. Lillian believes this program can change other students' lives. It's already making an impact on hers. Not only do I feel confident in the clothes that I'm wearing, but I also feel confident in the school that I'm attending to because the values that they're putting out um, for the alumni that they're all donating these clothes, it kind of sets forward an example to what I want to be. 
and you can tell by her smile and confidence when she was in there, she was excited. Can you imagine all the accessories, everything That's right good. there on campus? That is that is good. I was going to say, you know, there there are there are programs, and you've done stories mm -hmm. on you know different programs like Dress for Success, but it's so cool that this is actually on the St. Mary's campus, yeah. uh, convenient for the students there. Yeah, I'm excited to share more information on KSAT.com. Look forward to it. Time now, 9.08 and 63 degrees for now. As you continue your holiday shopping, it's important to be aware of thieves. Coming up, what you need to know about the specific things criminals look for while you're inside the store. And affordable dental care. It's something that we're all looking for after the break. How one program at a local community college is making sure everyone has access to it. Welcome back, it's 9-11. So going to the dentist can be very expensive, especially if you don't have insurance. But a new dental clinic at Palo Alto College is hoping to bridge that gap for affordable care. RJ Marquez went by the clinic and shows us how it's not only helping students get into a good career, but also helping families and senior citizens who need proper dental care on the South Side. So there's other little branches that come off. Alma Navarro is part of the first class of Palo Alto students to study in the college's new dental hygiene clinic. The first semester we're seeing oral facial, which is focused on head and neck anatomy and radiology and preclinic. Navarro moved from Mexico to San Antonio five years ago with her family. I always wanted to be a provider, healthcare provider. Getting proper and inexpensive oral care on the South Side is a challenge for many families. And most of the time, people do not seek dental care unless they are in pain. Diane Wilson is the director of dental hygiene at Palo Alto. She says the demand for hygienists has soared since COVID. That's why Palo Alto felt this clinic was imperative not only for their students, but for the community. We can oftentimes determine other possible illnesses. 1,500 students were interested in this program, 800 qualified, and only 30 were selected for this first group of students, showing the high demand in this critical dental field. Students will get hands-on training and start treating families at little to no cost this spring. We do have the best quality equipment that's out there along with the technology that is available in dentistry. In just two years, so, students so will become well. accredited dental hygienists, but for Alma, it means more than just a degree. The college goes beyond the classroom, so we'll be able to help the community for um, improving the oral health care. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Look out there with live cam. It's been a rainy morning and a rainy overnight. It's been kind of tricky for drivers headed out, you know, to work at school this morning. Yep, roads have been very wet, very soggy and messy out there. I know just on my way in this morning, there were a couple of accidents. So everyone just please be super careful. The good news is, though, by this afternoon, that commute is going to be a lot better than this morning's commute because we're going to be clearing things out a little bit more after lunchtime. So let's get you a look at the setup. What's causing this drizzle and mist and patchy fog that we have in place? There's an area of low pressure swinging across New Mexico right now. Actually, some snow closer to Albuquerque in northern New Mexico. No snow for the Lone Star State, especially for us here in South Central Texas. But you can see across the eastern half of the state, even up into the panhandle, we just just have this scattered light rain that continues to move across early this Thursday morning. And for us specifically here in South Central Texas, right now we'll look at your authority radar. We've got a few patches of some of that drizzle moving in between New Braunfels and Seguin, a few more showers near Howlettsville out east in Lavaca County. But remember, because of this mist and the fact that the water particles are a little bit smaller and below the radar beam in some locations, we look at the visibility numbers to really show where we still have some of that mist and drizzle moving across. Right now here in San Antonio, visibility still down to about one mile. Three miles in Carrizo Springs, two in Kerrville, as well as New Braunfels. So it very much still is with us, and that's going to be the theme here over the next couple of hours. But by lunchtime, a lot of this is going to start working its way farther eastward. Still, I think a few more notable showers will be possible near Hallettsville, Shiner stretching over to Gonzales, as well as Cuero. But the best 
better storm activity sits well east of our area near Bryan College Station as well as Houston. You can see by 3 p.m. we're starting to see a few peaks of sunshine return, especially across portions of the hill country. The farther west that you go, I do anticipate some more peaks of sun here in San Antonio later this afternoon and into the early evening as all of that rain continues to work its way farther eastward. Then I think a little bit of patchy fog could briefly work in first thing tomorrow morning before we see a boundary move through the region that actually is going to send in some drier air to wrap up the work week and even head into the upcoming weekend. So we'll talk about that in just a second. I do briefly want to mention that our far eastern counties, what we we're talking about a few seconds ago, will monitor for the very small potential to see an isolated strong, maybe briefly severe storm. It is a very conditional chance. The higher threat of that and higher concern is well east of our area. Once again, near Houston, Conroe, Brenham, Bryan College Station, where that area, especially highlighted in this orange color here, will need to monitor for the potential to see a, a few brief, weak tornadoes and maybe some strong winds there as well. So again, not here in San Antonio. We'll monitor for a very small chance across our far eastern counties. Let's talk temperatures. You can see because of just that gloominess that we have and dampness outside, we're in the low to mid 60s right now. 65 in Seguin, 63 over at the airport here in San Antonio, 62 in Kerrville, 61 over in Bernie. We're going to reach for the mid 60s here in the Alamo City by about lunchtime. Then as we start to see a few peaks of sun return later on this afternoon, we've got a high temperature point to about 70 and then we'll start to see those thermometers fall into the low 60s if you're stepping out for any Thursday evening plans. Here's a look at your forecast high temperatures for today. 73 in Nixon, 73 in Gonzales, 67 in Utopia and 68 over in Rio Medina. I mentioned that drier air moves in tomorrow. Take a look at this weekend. Fantastic. I know we've got the rock and roll running series happening this weekend as well. It'll be chilly in the mornings, upper 40s, low 50s, highs transitioning to the 70s. And that looks to continue for the most part as we head into next week, guys. Thanks, Mia. I'm excited to see that sun again. Yes, it looks good. And the holiday shopping is in full swing. And this time of year, criminals are looking for easy targets. San Antonio police say they see a surge in property crimes during the holidays burglars going car to car doing their best Grinch impressions. Max Massey spoke with the police about what the thieves and other criminals are shopping for while you're in the store. That's a whole box of what it looks like to be shotgun ammunition back there. If I'm a burglar, I'm thinking he has ammunition, there's a gun in here. So, you know, this car obviously gets a felon grade, uh, making themselves a victim. Officer Nick Solis and I walked car to car this morning. So I'm sorry, let's check this one out where he was able to spot vehicles that made for easy targets. I see a backpack in there. I think maybe a college student, maybe a laptop's in there, maybe some kind of electronics, right? So th this, this car would get a felling grade. It's a real problem year round, but especially during this holiday season shopping rush, a problem some people know all too well. My husband had his truck broken into right across from North Star Mall. Josie Shothoff says now she hides all the items in the vehicle. And of course, she keeps her head on a swivel when she's shopping. We know a lot of vehicles in and around South Texas. They have window tinting, and that might be problematic for our cameras, but for burglars, it really doesn't make that big a difference. They can still see in the vehicle and see items they want to take. A crime of opportunity. That's all it takes. Literally five to 10 seconds, right? They look inside that vehicle, they see electronics, a key, a cell phone, and they're breaking into that vehicle within five to 10 seconds. They have the tools to do it. If they can see it, they'll take it. If they can't see it, uh, Chances are they're going to go. They're going to pass right by your car. Lots of tools in here, a craftsman drill. And there's a concerted effort to prevent and even stop these crimes. Officers, along with detectives, are undercover at various places around the city um, trying to combat property crime. And it's a very successful program. The last piece of advice may seem obvious, but it's really a constant issue. Don't leave guns in the cars because guns end up in the hands of wrong people. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 920, 64 degrees outside. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, we are celebrating our Educator of the Month. She is a 7th grade math teacher at Rudder Middle School, and I'm going to share how she is constantly finding ways to make sure her students are happy. 
And check this out, before that, we're heading out to Henley's Gentlemen's Grooming in the Medical Center where the men of KSAT are shaving off and trimming up the beards they've been growing all month for No Shave November. That's right, you'll notice this year some of them are keeping some of their beards. Well, hmm. not all of it, just some of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna join them there in just three minutes. They look relaxed. <laughs> Welcome back. It's 923. So all month long, the guys here at KSET have been growing their beards and mustaches for a good cause. They've been taking part in No Shave November, raising money for cancer fighting foundations. But now that it's the last day of the month, they have a tough decision to make to keep or not to keep. Right, and our Steve Spreester joins us with the magnificent men of KSET out at Henley's <laughs> Gentlemen's Grooming in the Medical Center, where they are getting cleaned up. Good morning, Steve. Wow, what an intro, Steph and Tiffany, the magnificent men of KSAT at Henley's Gentleman's Grooming. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, yeah that's nice. I don't know. I'm, it is a hype squad. By the way, yes, we are letting it grow to fight cancer. A lot of us have detailed why we're doing it personally online on KSAT.com and in GMSA in the morning show. Uh, for me, it's for my uncle who died of colon cancer. And uh, actually, here, can I lift this gown? Of course. I'm not being inappropriate. Okay, look. <laughs> So I've got the old t-shirt that he had uh, when he was fighting cancer. So uh, we are raising money, No Shave November. There's a QR code that's up on the screen right now. I wanna thank the people here at Henley's Gentlemen's Grooming in the Medical Center for helping us out. And I think I'm the only one talking because I'm the only one who feels like it right now. I know Mark is about to get a little trim on his. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Look at Adam over there. Adam Barraza, photographer, he's got, you know, He's mummified, I think, with all that going on. He's got a little massage going on. Justin, Justin over there getting nice and relaxed. If we switch to the other side, the man in the towel is Nick Mantis. Sports. Look at David Sears. David, I think, was the first one done with the pre-shave just because he wanted to get right to the massage. Don't move, Dave. Don't move, Dave. You're good. <laughs> and then there's RJ. Yeah. Just nodding, that's good, RJ. I say give us a thumbs up, but I know that you can't right now. So we, have, we are so thankful to everybody that has donated so far to this effort. Jess, if you wanna start shaving me, go ahead. I'm taking it all the way off, by the way. We are now number two nationally. We have met our goal of more than $20,000, but of course we wanna raise as much as we can. I think uh, a trucking company is number one, and, and Mark said the Alaska State Troopers are in number three right now nationally. So we're trying to do what we can to raise as much money as we can to fight cancer because so many men ignore their own health that's also part of this. Get a colonoscopy, get a checkup, get a blood test, go to your doctor if you think something is wrong, because early detection, I know for my uncle, was so vital in all of this. So our goal was to raise $20,000. We have done that, but right now, I think the lead is something like $29,000. So we really are doing what we can to raise money with the help of Henleys and all of the great people out there who have donated. We are so appreciative and uh, I think Jess is fed up with me and she's like, let's get this thing going. Let's get this, let's get all this gray off your face. Maybe that's what she's saying. So we're gonna be out here. We'll continue to do live shots throughout the day, but right now we're gonna go to break on the 9 a.m. Be back in three minutes. Hey there guys, so we're back here at Hindley's in the medical center getting our beards taken care of. I'm not getting mine completely taken off, just cleaned up a little bit. And uh, Spreester's finally getting those grays taken care of over there, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's good. Your grays, oh. your grays, uh, yeah. So we're back here with No Shave November. Of course, we've been working on these beards all month. We've been raising money, and as we said earlier, we're so thankful for all the donations that have been given. Uh, from our viewers and from everyone else to the team and to the individuals. Uh, big thank you here to Adriana, who's taking care of my beard here at Henley's. Appreciate you. Uh, and I wanted to do something uh, right now. I want to talk to Adam Barraza, one of our uh, photographers here at KSAP. He has a very personal story when it comes to No Shave November and cancer. So I'm going to hand the mic over to him real quick. Robert, if you'll take that over to him. Uh, to me personally, you know, at a very young age, I was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer, and um, I had all, 
not, not all the signs of normal uh, cancer and everything, but um, I was feeling uncomfortable and I went to the doctor, got checked, and it turns out that was way. And I also, uh, you know, lost a young friend of mine who also had colon cancer. So with me doing this, you know, I want to raise awareness to young adults to get checked. Don't be afraid to, you know, get checked. And if something happens and something doesn't feel, uh, doesn't feel comfortable, you know, go to the doctor, get checked. It's okay. Figure it out. It's early, good to know early than late. Absolutely. Adam, we appreciate you, man. And we thank you for sharing that with us. And yes, it's so important. He brings up a good point. Get checked out. Go do it. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable, it's, you can always go to the doctor. You want to do it. And that's kind of why we're doing this. We're, we're growing these beards so people ask us, hey, why do you have beards on TV? And this is why. And then we raise awareness and we raise money, hopefully, for cancer research. And then hopefully... We find a cure for this because that's the end goal, right? We really want to get this taken care of. And uh, yeah, all the guys here at KSET have been doing a great job growing out the beards. We had 11 guys this year. And just go around the room and see Mark's getting his cleaned up. Mark, you're, uh, you're keeping yours, right? I am. I'm okay. It's looking good, my friend. Yeah. And uh, you see Spree Spreester's finally getting taken care of there, getting... <laughs> Uh, getting cleaned up. Spreester, are you, you're not keeping your beard, are you? I am not. Okay. Uh, the wife does not like the beard. So. The wife does not like the beard. Fair enough. She likes how it looks. She doesn't like how it feels. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That happens every now and then. And then on the other side of the room, we've got uh, Nick Mantis, uh, sports guys. Look at, the, look at the hands. Getting some moisturizing going on. Uh, we got David, who's, he may or may not be awake. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, he's not making a sound, so he's uh, <laughs> he's in dreamland over there. Yeah, and then we got RJ, who's, uh, I believe he's keeping his beard as well, getting it cleaned up a little bit, and uh, looking good. So again, we want to say thank you to all those who have donated. It's not too late, by the way, if you want to put in some donations. You can donate to me if you want. I'm just saying, I'm just putting that out there, but I have the microphone. You can donate to any of these guys in here, or to the team. And again, we appreciate the money, and hopefully on this last day, we can raise a little bit more money. We surpassed our goal of 20,000, which we're so proud of. And again, just a big thank you to Henley's for having us out today and uh, to all those who have supported us this year. Guys. Thanks, Justin. Yes, we're so proud of all you. of you. And I, we need to show this segment to David later, just if, in case he's he, not awake. I'm gonna ask him if, if he was awake, but yes, <laughs> thank you to the guys of KSET for, for doing this and for all the donations that came in. Thank you to the people who donated, especially our morning viewers, because if you notice on the leaderboard, all the top people on the leaderboard are uh, from the morning hours. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yep, great work all around. And thank you guys so much for those donations. All right, so it has been a very messy start to the day. We've had some drizzle, we've had some fog, even some light rain that's been moving across South Central Texas. Because of that, take a look at the pollen count for today. So molds are still the only allergen in the count, but as expected, because of the damp weather, they have increased from what we saw yesterday. So molds are now moderate at 650. So we'll continue to monitor that in the days ahead. All right, turned up the sensitivity a little bit on this radar so you can really see where we still have some of the more notable drizzle in Bear County, stretching up I-35 near New Braunfels, even into Austin, even more rain closer to Victoria and Houston. That's where most of that is going to stay as it starts to work eastward. We've got the cloud cover in place, overcast skies, and temperatures are in the 50s and 60s. 63 here in San Antonio. It's 56 out west in Del Rio, 55 in Carrizo Springs, 57 in Rock Springs. Now in terms of this rain, this will continue to move eastward throughout the remainder of the morning and even into this afternoon. So we will still deal with the few patches of drizzle and some mist here generally through about lunchtime. And then I think as we continue on through the afternoon, we're going to start to dry things out and we'll also see a little bit of sunshine return which is going to help temperatures climb to about 70 degrees here closer to San Antonio. Now this weekend is looking great, very comfortable with low humidity. So we'll talk all about it, get you a little bit more of a look, especially when it comes to the rock and roll running series happening this weekend. All of that in just a few guys. Thanks, Mia. And we're looking outside with your traffic authority right here. This is I-37 and US 181 northbound. 
and the shoulder and the main lane are blocked right now. So if you're heading this direction, please use caution. It's bumper to bumper at this point. That's right. Also, the educator of the month brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. Yes, also at I-37, northbound at Military. And every month here at KSET, we like to recognize our local educators. Our staff here has the honor of reading through all the wonderful nominations. So the person who wrote in about Rudder Middle School 7th grade teacher, math, math teacher Heather Ruiz, told us that Heather is a superhero and that she is constantly finding new and unique ways to enrich the lives of her students. We have um, a special surprise today that we wanted you all to be included in. Is there a uh, Mrs. Ruiz here? It's amazing because on the day to day just getting to work with the kids is enough and then to know that somebody took time to acknowledge the, you know, the, all the little things that add up is amazing. We'd like to present to you Educator of the Month. <laughs> 7th grade math teacher Heather Ruiz was surprised when we presented her with KSET's Educator of the Month Award. However, her students at Rudder Middle School tell us they were not so surprised because their teacher is so deserving of this honor and recognition. I'm very excited. Ms. Ruiz, she is very engaging. She is always helping us, going the extra mile to make sure that we're doing good in her class. Being an accelerated pre-algebra student, it is hard to understand some of the things that we're being taught. Um, so the fact that she helps us, make sure that we're doing our work, keeps us engaged, um, it helps a lot. It's really fun. She helps us understand um, work that we're having trouble with. What should I spend it on? While this is Heather's second year at Rudder Middle School, she has been with Northside ISD for more than 20 years, and her mission making learning interesting and fun for her seventh grade students. The middle schoolers are my people because they're so much fun. They're willing to engage in those fun activities we use at the elementary level, but at the same time, like they're ready to learn. And so I can see them grow as people. Heather says her class can be fun, especially when her students get to be in teams to talk their math out. Getting them to actually talk it out and hear from their peers really works wonders. And we use lots of manipulatives and real life things to help them connect to what we're learning because math can be kind of abstract for the Kiddos. All this while learning Spanish specifically for educators, and she's taking classes to learn Pashto too, all so she can communicate with her students' parents. And Heather's daughter, Paige, who showed up to the campus to see her mom receive the Educator Award, tells us she is so proud of her mom. I don't know how she does it. She has so much things on her place. Like she has all four of us, and then she has school, and then she has all the other things that she does because we're all in sports. So she takes us to soccer practices, and my other, my little sister does basketball too. Yeah, thank you. No, that's pretty so it was really cool to surprise Heather, obviously, because we, we didn't we didn't tell her, you know, they brought everybody into the library. She thought we, she was there to hear another speaker. Aww. And what was super cool, you saw at the end of the story, her daughter was there because her daughter is actually a college student. Okay. And so they the school contacted the daughter and the daughter surprised her there as so well. Sweet. Yeah, so it was super really cool. mom, super teacher. Yes. Yes. So congrats again. Congratulations. And then again, if you would like to nominate an educator, it could be a teacher or a staff member, whoever you want for our Educator of the Month contest, you can get over to our website. And we know we have lots of amazing teachers here in San Antonio and the surrounding county. Yes, we do. We actually have a lot of nominations, and yeah. I'm, I'm lucky that I don't have to go through all of them. <laughs> it's, it's another team of people. Yeah, that's hard. Well, yes. thanks, Steph. Beautiful story. Time now, 940, 64 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Let's look out there with Zoo Cam, our friends. The flamingos are enjoying the rain this morning, and if you'd like to see them in person, it's 940 right now, but the zoo doesn't open until 11, so uh, it's still a great day to go. And to the, the changing of the weather is going to be perfect for if you want oh, to see the true. zoo lights tonight. Yeah, that's right. It'll be better for, for the evening as yes. well. We'll be right back. Welcome back, it's 943. So Via is honoring the late civil rights activist Rosa Parks, who is most known for her pivotal role in the Montgomery, Alabama bus, bus boycott by offering free rides for Rosa Parks Day tomorrow. So Via and St. Phillips College, they are also inviting people to watch a live storytelling performance that will show the story of Rosa Parks, who was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to make room for a white passenger 68 years ago. The performance called Sister Rosa Parks, The Bus Stops Here, is happening this evening from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Watson Fine Arts Center on the St. Phillips campus on Martin Luther King Drive. So it's free and open to everyone. 
Via's Rolling Museum, which is a fully restored 1968 Dreamliner bus, will also be on site, parked right outside the Watson Fine Arts Center, beginning at 4 p.m. We do think for sure that this particular performance will be something that families can enjoy, you know, young and old, and they can learn a lot about this pivotal moment in history, you know, when Rosa Parks refused to give up her bus seat because of the color of her skin. And that helped to really um, expand the efforts that now we reap the rewards for, which are all the rights that are open to all of us, thanks to people like her that took a stand to push forth the rights for everybody, equal rights. And the video you saw earlier was of an actress and then she will be actually performing this evening. Now, VIA has been commemorating the civil rights activists with their Rosa Parks seat program since 2005 here in San Antonio. There is an engraved seat dedicated to Parks memory that is placed in each of VIA's 500 plus buses. The bright yellow seat is installed on the front right side of each bus below a sign that tells of her December 1st, 1955 protest. Again, people can ride with Via for free tomorrow in honor of her legacy. And the weather will be a little bit better this evening for <laughs> yeah. plans like that. But yeah. also, I want to mention at Palo Alto College, mm -hmm. they're having the winter wonderland, and that's starting at 5 till 8 o'clock. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to be there, and I'm excited nice. to see everyone. Yeah. That is so fun. It's going to be awesome. Anything with lights yes. is yes. so magical. So that's today. Today. Yes, it's going to be a lot better later Good. on today compared to what we've seen earlier this morning. We're going to see all of this dampness move eastward. And yes, we're anticipating a few peaks of sunshine later on today as that's well. So yes, that. that's going to be nice. All right, let's get you a look at those weather headlines. That essentially will be the theme throughout the remainder of this Thursday, wrapping up the month of November into tomorrow. I do think some patchy morning fog briefly will be possible. Then we're going to see a weak front move in. That's actually going to allow for some drier air to push into the area. Because of that, temperatures climbing even more so than what we've seen today, mid 70s, so slightly warmer than average for this time of year. And that will carry over into this weekend. But with low humidity, this weekend's going to be great. Chilly mornings, upper 40s, low 50s, a little bit more sunshine and highs climbing into the low to mid 70s. So that is great news for any weekend plans you may have out and about. But before we can get there, we still have to deal with the patchy fog, the mist and the drizzle, even some pockets of light rain out there early this morning. Here's the latest in terms of visibility. Still just a mile over at SA International, down a little bit in Bernie, half of a mile there, a little bit better in Castroville, but Hondo a little bit farther west down Highway 90, about a mile and a half in terms of visibility. So give yourself a little bit of extra time to get to where you need to be here over the next couple of hours. In terms of the radar, we've got a few more notable pockets of drizzle, maybe some light rain on the far east side of Bear County, even on the county line there near northern Wilson County along Highway 87, a few more showers out east in Lavaca County near Hallettsville. So we'll keep eyes on all of that and the very small potential for an isolated strong storm across our far eastern counties near Gonzales, Cuero, Shiner, Hallettsville there as well. But you can see the better activity is going to stay closer to Bryan College Station and the Houston area by 3 p.m. Most of that is moving on out of here and we are expecting some of that sunshine to make its return, helping those temperatures reach for about 70 degrees. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast. 30% potential remains at lunchtime, 65 degrees, 69 at 3 p.m. There's that 70 degree forecast high by about four to five o'clock. Then later this evening, partly cloudy skies, the rain chance goes away and temperatures will start to fall back into the low 60s by about 7 to 8 o'clock. So a little bit cooler up into the hill country later on today, 67 in Kerrville, 73 in Gonzales, 75 in Catula, stretching over to Carrizo Springs and Eagle Pass. Again, this is the setup, the catalyst behind this activity. We've got that area of low pressure over New Mexico. We've got more Gulf moisture that's streaming in out ahead of that system. So that's why we have more scattered rain across the eastern half of the Lone Star State, and even up into the Panhandle. Speaking of the Panhandle, check out temperatures 45 degrees in Amarillo. But if you think that's cold, how about 31 in Omaha, Nebraska, 22 in Bismarck, 
it is five degrees right now in Casper, Wyoming. Very, very cold. Again, not going to get anywhere near that cold here in South Central Texas, but it will be chilly over the next few mornings and patchy fog tomorrow. Low 50s at 7 a.m. Mid 70s with more sunshine. All right, rock and roll running series happening this weekend here in San Antonio, December 2nd and 3rd. It'll be chilly in the mornings, upper 40s, low 50s, but especially on Sunday for those running the half marathon and especially the marathon could get a little warm by about lunchtime, uh, but temperatures looking to top off in the low 70s on Sunday. And then really that quiet weather pattern is going to continue into next week. So once we kind of get finished with all of that fog and mist right now, we're looking at a great stretch of days here in South Central Texas. And Steph, you're running this weekend. Yes, on, on Sunday. So they have the, the 5K and 10K on Saturday, mm -hmm. and on Sunday they have the half and the full. You excited? I, I am. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't know. I was telling Mark earlier, like, he's like, are you ready? I'm like, well, no, but I think we're never ready. Yeah. We just we just go and, and have fun. And at least I think now the runners will just uh, maybe dress in layers. Yes, uh, yeah. that's know. a good idea. Yeah, because yeah. it'll it'll warm up really quick. I'm sure. <laughs> I love seeing when runners prep the night before and they have the clothes set up, they have yes. their shoes set up. Yes. It's so much fun. Yeah, because uh, you sometimes it's like even I mean, even for us who rise early in the morning, still like on race day, your mind's still like, Woo! So yeah. it's, good. <laughs> it's good to have everything prepared. Just Mix just match. a note. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever works. You'll be fine. You're going to do great. <laughs> Thank you. Time now, 950 and 65 degrees for now. And from Wonka to Aquaman, movie lovers are eagerly waiting for all the star-studded films coming to theaters next month. When we come back, a look at what's showing this holiday movie season. December gets off to a roaring start when Godzilla Minus One stomps into theaters on the first. Waitress the Musical dances its way onto movie screens for a five-day limited theatrical engagement starting on the 7th. She's an experiment. Good evening. Her brain and her body are not quite synchronized. Award season hopeful Poor Things starring Emma Stone arrives in theaters on Friday the 8th. My name is Willy Wonka. You see, I'm something of a magician. Prepare to be amazed. Timothy Chalamet's turn as the man who would be king of candy looks to sweeten up movie theaters when Wonka opens December 15th. Let's just tell everyone we're together. What? December 22nd has a trio of new movies opening, starting with the rom-com Anyone But You. We're on an adventure. Yeah! Seeing what else life has to offer. Along with Illumination's latest animated adventure, Migration. Half a billion people from every known species in the sea call this place home. And the superhero flick Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, starring Jason Momoa. And on Christmas Day, the film adaptation of the Color Purple stage musical debuts in movie theaters. Skipping the large soda in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I guess we're going to have to go to the movie theater. <laughs> yeah. So, so many amazing options. films. I'm yeah. excited. Although I was going to say, like, I guess maybe during the early part of the day would be like movie theater I would, weather. Yeah, I would think so. It's also time for some holiday movies. That's oh, what that's I'm right. so excited about. That love those love too. movies. And we can go back and watch some of the old ones as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least the weather's nice today. It's a little bit for everybody. You know, rain, sun, we have it all. Exactly. Have a great day, guys. <laughs>